Hello, hello, hello. It's Diana coming on five minutes early for my Happy Lawyer installment. Um, I'm at Mardi Gras. These are all my beads so far. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. These are all my beads like today. And these, these I caught. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything nasty to catch these beads, but I made it on. Hey, Wesley. Five minutes early. Oh, Norman Chan coming on early. Good. Hey, Norm, how are you? I, I heard they closed the schools <laughs> in New York City for six inches of snow. What is going on with our world? Six inches of snow? We went to school in a foot of snow. Well, you know, maybe the school was closed, but it was never anything that was like that out of control that, uh, you know, got to close the schools with six inches of snow. And I hear it's six inches overnight. They're just nervous. They're just nervous because they're they're very afraid. The lawyers that they're gonna go and <clears throat> take kids to school in buses that are gonna get stuck or something, and then the kids are gonna be stuck on the bus. I mean, of all things, New York City kids take the subway, right? So I don't even understand how that could be something that's. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know it's quite a crazy scene. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to do two things at once here. I don't know how I'm gonna time myself because. Uh... <sighs> yes, I'm figuring out how to, yeah, I'm just going to have to, look at that little tiny clock. Hey, Patrick Finn. Patrick Finn, you're missing an amazing Mardi Gras. These are all my beads. I'm going to show everybody all my beads that I got so far. It's, I, I don't know if you guys have been looking, you know, throughout the weekend, but um, today in the French Quarter it was dead. Sunday in the French Quarter, very quiet at around uh, 2 o'clock. I mean, I was shocked. But, you know, hey, I don't care. I, I like it when it's a little less crowded. It's fine with me. But, um, you know, if I want crowds, I know where to go. I just go to Bourbon Street at midnight <laughs> on Saturday. And uh, other than that, but it's a great crowd. It's been great. And uh, the weather's been beautiful. Uh, 70s, high 70s and sunny and a little overcast. But then earlier today, a, a front blew through and... Now it's going to be in the 50s, like 56, 57. But, you know, down here it's balmy, balmy at that temperature. But I am a little disappointed because March is usually a warm, Mardi Gras is hardly ever in March, and it's a very warm month. So uh, I thought it would be like 70s, but I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm probably going to be, uh, I'm going to be grumpy cat tomorrow again for Mardi Gras. So, uh, so I'll just be wearing, you know, clothes, I'll be all covered up. And uh, not tomorrow, Tuesday, Mardi Gras Day Tuesday. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So let's see what time we got. Two more minutes. Um, I don't think they're going to close the courts tomorrow. I mean, usually when they close the school, they close the courts. I can't imagine them closing the courts for six inches of snow. I would be happy because I'm missing work. And if everything just gets adjourned, we have a saying at per diem appearances, don't go away, they just get adjourned. So uh, I would be happy if it was just adjourned and I would be able to pick it up next week. But I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I'm, uh, I'm fine with all of that. <clears throat> Almost time. <laughs> Hello, Gennady. How are you? And uh, who else is coming on to join us? Rosie, Rosie Castillo joining us now. So let's see. Oh, almost. Yeah, I need a big clock. I don't know how I'm going to get a big clock. I don't have a watch or anything, and this is my only phone. So I'll just go until I'm done. Today's going to be a little mixture of rehearsed and not, actually none of it's rehearsed. I'm going off the top of my head. <clears throat> going off the top of my head today. Okay, 8 o'clock, and here we are. Welcome to the third installment of Diana the Happy Lawyer Archives. Thank you so much for joining me. I am at the Mardi Gras. Um, I'm lucky I remember that it's Sunday at 8 o'clock because it's actually 7 o'clock here. I'm an hour earlier, and uh, I would have to, um, you know, I, I set an alarm so that I would know. Because <laughs> in New Orleans during Mardi Gras, it's either dark out or light out. It's not really any other... Uh, you don't pay attention to time. You just see the dark or light. So I'm going to start today by doing a little recap from last week. Last week's lesson was uh, goals, hurdles, and girdles. 
And the takeaway was that uh, you're going to uh, get challenges in life on the way to your goals. And those challenges are going to be like hurdles that you have to jump over or go around. Or they're going to be things that you just have to go through it. And like a girdle, you're just going to have to suck it up and uh, just head through it. Um, Norm actually left a great message, a, a great comment last week that... Um, all big discoveries in history have been met with challenges and those challenges and obstacles were always overcome and the really the biggest goals uh, you expect challenges and when you expect the challenges then it's you know easy nobody really expects a free you know e free and easy ride depends what you're doing but mostly um, when you're going for something big those challenges are going to be there so expect them and uh, <clears throat> you won't be unprepared that was another point from last week uh, get help from other people or do research or go to school to get you prepared for the challenges like the hurdlers in the uh, in the Olympics they rehearse and they run a million times before they get to the Olympics and jump so um, you want to get help and seek advice from other people but then again as Abraham Maslow says be independent of the good opinions of other people even when you get the advice that you need or that you're seeking or somebody's offering help or a family member is giving you suggestions, take all of that into consideration, but be independent of their good opinions so that you can just you know, do what you want. Um, the uh, uh, Bruce Lee comment, the Bruce Lee quote, be like water, my friend, be as water, my friend. Water goes around obstacles like without difficulty. It just gets to the obstacle and just slides around or over and uh, it, does not get challenged by that so be like water I say that to myself very frequently when I'm going I say be like water and um, <clears throat> the other thing was last week when you're faced with challenges think outside the box don't rely on what you commonly know to be true or believe to be true or anything that you've tried in the past that hasn't worked you got to think outside the box because yield signs are red yield signs are red for the last 10 years Everybody last week who thought they were yellow, I think my audience is a little older. I'm sure there are younger people who've been driving in their 20s or early 30s, and they just think yield signs are red, but they are red. But for the rest of us, they've been yellow for all of our lives. And when you believe that something is true, as hard as you believe that yield signs are yellow, then someone tells you they've been red for 10 years. And I'm sure a lot of people drove around last week and said, there's a yield sign and it's red. There's a yield sign and it's red. Maybe it's true. And my ideas are you know have to have room for change think outside the box when you're trying to overcome your hurdles and sucking up to get through them uh, like a girdle um, the tip of the week last week I, I always focus on walking uh, my one of my favorite exercises is walking it's simple it uh, doesn't require any special talent or skill or any special equipment you just go out the door and you just let your mind go you, walking by yourself is amazing and um, your mind will just be open to different ideas let different ideas come into your head or let stress out of your head while you're walking it's good so the tip was to keep your shoes by the door or um, I keep my stuff by the door or by the end of your bed so that you, when you get up in the morning or handy, just leave them close. I think by the door is probably good because, you know, you might just decide, hey, I want to take a walk. And even if you just start by walking up the block, walking five minutes and then coming back, you're going to be uh, ahead of the game because then you'll, you know, the fresh air is just good for you. And if you have a dog, you're lucky. Life is blessed with a dog. You know, dog spelled backwards is God. That's not an accident. And um, you'll be able to, you know, enjoy your walks even more. And, and if you have to walk the dog, if you're like a person that has a dog, like, oh, I got to walk the dog at night, enjoy it. Just go out. Take that dog for a walk. Use it, as, use it as an excuse to be relaxed and to walk and to just inhale and exhale any stresses of the day. And also inhale new ideas about how to achieve your goals. So uh, that's my recap from last week. This week... Our title is um, uh, Mardi Gras is for children and that you should be like a child. Now, we're waiting for the Bacchus Parade. It's one of my favorite parades. It's the first night parade. Oh, no, I, I filmed another night parade before. But I'm going to show you out the window. It's been raining all day, and so a lot of kids have, uh, have kind of like 
you know, people are like abandoned, but let's go out the window. <clears throat> so here is what Mardi Gras is about. Woo, it's going to be, of course, difficult now. I've been trying this all day. Uh, come on, out the window. Okay, there you go. Kind of. All right, so there's little kids out here. Just my luck, there are no little kids playing in the street. But Mardi Gras is for children. You can see over there, there's... Well, over here, you see all these... Um, see all those ladders and stuff? Little children will be standing on those ladders. And uh, kids just play in the street. I'm going to try and get back to you towards the end because there's a whole party of kids over there that are just waiting to waiting for the next parade. See that little kid up there? He's kicking his heels. And they just come out here with their family. It's a very family-oriented area where I stay. And, um, you know, Mardi Gras is for children and for adults who act like children. So that's me. I'm an adult who acts like a child. Uh, this is my room. Oh, Jack, I hope you've been watching, uh, hope you've been watching some of the live music that I've been sending because it's great. So this is my, this is my room at the, uh, at the hotel. I'm just waiting and I am on the parade route. These are, now here's the, there's the thing. See these people? They are in tuxedos and they're going to, uh, a ball. It's a formal affair. The Mardi Gras balls are all formal affairs, and you you go in a tuxedo and you drag a cooler because for the ball you have to bring your own food and your own liquor. So these people dress up in tuxedos and then they walk down the street. They're dragging a cooler to get to the ball, and the balls are right. Oh, finally, some kids playing. Here you go. So look at this little kids. They're in the street. They're having fun. So the funny thing about a lot of these little kids is that um, they've born and raised in New Orleans. There's a little girl with her dad playing. Born and raised in New Orleans, and they don't know that New Orleans that Mardi Gras doesn't happen everywhere in the country. A lot of these kids grow up, and when they're 15 or 16, and they go traveling, or they go to college even, they end up uh, there, and they say, you know, it's Mardi Gras time. Where's all the parades? And people go, what are you talking about? There's no, <laughs> there's no parades here. So these are children that are growing up and just like many of us believe that stops that yield signs are yellow these are children that are going to grow up and believe that mardi gras goes on in all over the world and they are in for a rude awakening when they find out it doesn't these are the beads that i've received so far from just catching uh, and we're about halfway through we're about halfway through the parades and this i bought for myself because i think it's beautiful so and i've been eating an amazing amount of food so it's really incredible Okay, so, so Mardi Gras is for children, and, and we lose that innocence as time goes on when we're exposed to all different things, negativity in our world from outside influences, schooling, uh, p t parents, teachers, friends. Somebody eventually will tell somebody that, you know, there's no Santa Claus. I think there was a teacher that got in big trouble because she told kids there was no Santa Claus. And then the kids started prying her for information about, well, what about the Easter Bunny? And what about the Tooth Fairy? And uh, she apparently spilled the beans. And a lot of those kids ran home and said, my teacher told me there was no Santa Claus. And she got in big trouble. I think she might have even gotten fired. But um, when you grow up, you lose that. Uh, part of being a child and I'm going to I want to encourage you and inspire you to keep that in your life be like a child um, there's a saying I, I don't remember it exactly but it's like think like a child but then act out like an adult so you have childhood ideas that are out of this world and unstoppable and then you use your adult abilities to um, to act them out. When I was young, I saw Perry Mason as a kid and I thought being a lawyer was the coolest thing. Perry Mason never lost, as we know, and he was in black and white and the music was just so compelling, you know? Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. Anyway, I don't know if too many people know Perry Mason, but believe me, it was good. So when I was a kid, I thought, I wanna be a lawyer. And in my brain, uh, it just sunk in until it was part of my subconscious mind and there was nothing that, that, that you could talk, nobody could talk me out of it. And I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to accomplish that goal because as a child, I believed it. 
just like as a child here, believes that Mardi Gras is everywhere. So <clears throat> what is it that children do? What is it that children do that we don't do as adults? Children play more. You know, they go out and play. They, they kick a ball around or, or draw and, and, and be creative. So I'm inspiring you to tell you to go out and play more. Um, even just, you know, walking, running, play basketball, uh, do whatever it is. Go to the local park and swing on a swing like you did when you were a kid. Whatever it is that's near you, go bowling. Whatever it is that you can do to play, you should definitely do that more. Um, and also, children use their imagination. There was a study of um, some scientists, you know, I don't know, the scientists as we call them, in one of the thinking schools, MIT or something, and they showed abstract pictures to adults and the same abstract pictures to children. And the abstract pictures that the adults, they said, what does this look like to you? And the adults would come up with like three or four things that it looked like. And then they showed those same pictures to the children. And the children would come up with like 10 different things that it looked like. They would just, their minds were just so much more open than the adults to uh, express what they thought these things were using their imagination to put the dots or whatever it was together to say what they thought that this was. So use your imagination more. Uh, we get you know, we get curtailed and cut off from our imagination as, as negativity builds up. Uh, Earl Nightingale is very, very big on talking about how when people are even in their 20s, they're all excited about business and going on to succeed. And out of 100 people, by the time they're 50, only about two of them will have succeeded. And what happens to that zeal? What happens to that excitement when you're young to go on and, and do the things that you believe are doable over the exposure to different things will um, negativity will cause you to lose that feeling and not succeed and not overcome the obstacles that are in front of you so the other thing about children is they're easily amused give or give a little child a you know a ball or a, or, or a set of keys or even a crayon and little kids will just start playing they'll uh, go right for it so I am a person who's very easily amused as well I'll laugh at anything. And you know what? My life is a lot more fun. <laughs> life is much more fun when you are easily amused. And um, when kids are trying to do something, they're not, they don't talk themselves out of it. They don't say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build a, a, a snowman in the backyard and then say, oh, you know what? It's too cold. I'm in, I don't want to wear my gloves. I don't want to get all dressed up. It's going to be wet out there. It, you know, I'm, I'm uh, nobody outside to play with. I have to go do it myself. And they don't talk themselves out of having fun. And a lot of times as adults, we do. We talk ourselves out of what our goals are going to be. We think of all the negative things. I tell you, if you're trying to start a, something, start a business or um, plan a trip uh, or do anything, build something, grow something, there'll be a hundred reasons why you shouldn't do it. In your mind, you can come up with a hundred different reasons why you shouldn't try it. But the only you need is one good reason to go for it. So... Ignore all the negative reasons to not do it. Just follow the one good reason. You only need one reason to go after your goal. Forget about the 99 other reasons that you shouldn't do it. Just go for the one that you should, that you should go after. Um, another thing about kids is uh, they don't worry about stuff. Unless a kid is being raised by a worrier, an, a parent who's always worried about uh, what's going to happen here and where are we going to go, unless they're exposed to that, children uh, don't worry about anything. And they, uh, as a result, uh, don't doubt themselves. They don't think that they can't do things. And doubt is a killer. Once you start doubting, it's tough. Now, you know, last week I was talking about the obstacles and the... Uh, the tree, the oak tree. I talked about watering your oak tree is like watering the goals that you want. And you can also water your obstacles and problems and they'll grow as well. Well, the thing about the oak tree that grows to, into goals, that takes a while. It takes dedication and it takes uh, perseverance and persistence to grow your acorn into your giant oak tree goals. But growing your worries and growing your, your challenges, that takes about 
five minutes. You could have something that you're about to do and then all of a sudden you think of a challenge. It's gonna cost too much, it's gonna take too much time. And I can tell you, you can put water on that, you can feed your obstacles and challenges and it will grow instantly. It's like a bamboo tree shooting up and all of those obstacles will grow around you like weeds. So the goal will take longer to grow. The obstacle takes about five minutes to grow. You could, before you even get out of the house in the morning, you're already feeding your obstacles and you're growing them into, into things that are, that are blocking you. So, um, you know, be like a child and, and, and worry less about stuff. Ernie, you said something last week. My friend Ernie had a comment that was, uh, worrying makes you suffer twice, something like that. I tried to look it up. It's apparently when you worry the first time, it's before the thing has even happened. And then when you go and you do the challenging thing, you're worrying a second time. So um, there was uh, an idea that if you are facing something that's a challenge, if you make it bigger than it is before you get to it and you start worrying about it, then you're beating yourself up before you even get there. And like I said last week, many times we say, oh, that wasn't so bad. So when you're saying stuff like, oh, that wasn't so bad, that wasn't so bad, it means you've been watering your obstacles and they've grown up way too tall for you uh, too quickly and you're going to have to, you know, beat them down and weed that out, weed out those obstacles before you can, uh, before you can move on to your goals. So how is it that kids are, are able to do this? Uh, you know, play, imagine, easily amuse, not worry, not talk themselves out of stuff. Um, a lot of times, what is it that kids don't do also? Kids don't watch the news. Kids don't watch the news before they're going to bed. And they don't wake up and listen to the news. Hopefully your kid, if you have kids, or you are a kid, don't watch the news before you go to bed. It's like, think about what if you watch like a scary movie before you go to bed? Ever watch a scary movie before you go to bed and then you're going to bed and you're like, oh my God, that was a scary ghost movie and a scary, and I'm so scared I gotta go to bed now. Well, I hate to tell you, but when you watch the news, it's like watching a scary movie before you go to bed. So don't watch the news. Don't listen to the news in the morning. While you're driving to work, I, if you have to listen to the news for 15 or 20 minutes, go ahead. I was in a friend's, visiting a friend recently in the hospital and the neighbor, the neighbor guy had his TV on and I was there at 3.30. So at four o'clock, five o'clock and six o'clock, they, uh, <laughs> Joanna's a big kid at 70, woo! I have to stop and shout out to that. So the news was at four o'clock, five o'clock and six o'clock verbatim, the same exact thing. And he had it on, he listened to it for three hours. The same stories in the same order with the same commentary and it was all bad. It was all who ran over people with a car and what children died in a fire. I mean, it was just, by the time the third time was on, I wanted to go over and just shut the thing off because it was so depressing for me to be hearing this horrible news all the time. So children generally don't watch the news and you should not watch the news. I guarantee if something really bad happens, if there's a zombie apocalypse, you'll find out. Somebody will tell you. So don't watch the news. I haven't watched news in years. Uh, only when I unfortunately have to listen to it do I get exposed. But... Um, so don't watch the news. If you want to listen to the news in the morning in your car, listen for 20 minutes, and then put on some music. Put on some music that you like to sing or sing to. Really, if you have a 30-minute drive to work, it's maybe six or seven songs. So pick six or seven songs on your YouTube or whatever it is uh, that you'll listen to and that you can sing along to because that stuff is going to be what's uh, going to implant in your mind as opposed to the news. So don't listen to the news. Kids sing all the time too. If you see a lot of kids, they'll just make up songs. They'll just make up songs that they're, you know, that, that's good for them at the time. So um, you definitely want to stay away from the news. Limit yourself to news. If you could do it 100%, fine. I promise you'll be told of something if something's urgent or just uh, watch for 20 minutes because it's going to be the same stories in the next 20 minutes. You're not going to need to hear it twice. Nothing's going to change. And don't watch the news before you go to bed. It's like planting rotten seeds in your brain. It's like planting uh, poison ivy in your brain and waking up expecting to have roses. So whatever gets planted in your brain, that's what's going to grow. Your brain's like fertile soil.
So don't plant that in, especially before you go to sleep, because when you're sleeping, what you've planted in your brain is like fermenting. That's why it's good to read something something spiritual before you go to bed or listen to some nice music cooking channel very creative cooking channels great i used to like this show with um they made masks face off it was called face off and it was all these kids that were trying to impress hollywood producers about uh, you know their mask making abilities uh, it was really great because they're you know i could go home tonight that was the funny line and also Shark Tank. I watch Shark Tank because that, to me, is imaginative inventors, so I really like that, and I imagine myself being on there one day. So um, you want to uh, make sure you pay attention to what's going in your brain, especially before you go to sleep. If you have a stressful day, this is a very good recommendation. Write stuff down before you go to sleep. Have a pen and paper near the bed and just scribble whatever you need that's aggravating you. Gary, I hope you can stay awake for this. <laughs> Scribble whatever's aggravating you from the day. If somebody cuts you off in traffic or you're having some kind of problem or if you're angry about something that happened in the world, scribble it down, write it down, and get it out of your brain before you go to sleep. So that's going to help you sleep and you're going to wake up better. And again, wake up. Uh, Zig Ziglar says that people wake up to an alarm clock. And now, how horrifying is that? Alarm is like a terrible word. You don't want to wake up to an alarm clock. Nobody wants to hear about alarms as soon as they wake up. So he says, call it an opportunity clock. He wakes up to his opportunity clock. So when he hears it go off, he says, oh, I have opportunities now. Another day for new opportunities. So what else is it about kids? They, uh, is that they, they believe. They believe what's in their minds. They believe they can do anything. They believe that they're going to accomplish their goals. Wayne Dyer, who I've mentioned just casually, who is one of my biggest influences, he has a book called You'll See It When You Believe It. So the idea is that you have to believe it in your mind and then it will come into existence. There's another guy who I really love. His name is Neville Goddard. Uh, you should listen to some Neville Goddard. He's really over, he's very, uh, he's very deep. And even sometimes I'll listen to him and I'll be like, what? I got to listen to that again. And again, repetition, listen to stuff over and over. So Neville Goddard has this uh, speech called Believe It In. You have to believe things into existence. He said his grandfather would stand on an empty lot and say, I remember when this was an empty lot. And then he would paint a word picture of the building that he was going to put up on the lot. And then slowly but surely that building would come into existence because he believed it into existence. He believed it would happen. And that unyielding belief is what brings it about. The universe will conspire to bring about the things that you believe to be true. And if those things you believe are negative, it's going to bring about negative things. So you want to make sure that you're always believing in positive results and positive uh, events. Uh, Oprah Winfrey talks a lot about her belief that she was going to be in a movie and win an Oscar. And she knew, she says, I know, like I know, like I know that it was the color purple and that she was going to be in that movie. And she said that she got offered several movie roles and she was like, is it the color purple? No, no, no. And then finally, it was the color purple. How she got came up with that, I don't know. But she got the role. She played it like she believed in it for her whole life, which she did. And it came to her because of that belief. And she won an Oscar. So, you know, Oprah, you can... You can Google Oprah and she'll talk about the believe it in to existence theories. So um, another thing about believing it in is if you've noticed, I'm talking when I come on, I say this is Diana's uh, archives. It's episode three of the Diana the Happy Lawyer archives. So by doing that, by calling them the archives, I am necessarily creating a very long and successful career for myself in doing this. And it's by by saying that that I've already projected myself into the future, into a future success. Neville Goddard talks about going to a meeting and saying, I remember when I spoke in front of the ladies club in Chicago. And meanwhile, he's at that club now. So when he says, I remember that I did that, 
it's already behind him and he's plump pushed himself into the future of his successful goals. So when I'm telling you that these are the Diana the Happy Lawyer archives, some other people might be like, I finally made it on and this is my first show, but this is not. This is the archives. So when you get to however many years from now and I'm famous and I'm on Oprah getting interviewed, you'll say, I remember the Diana archives and I was part of it when they were created. So um, that's how much I believe. That's how much I believe in it. And it is that my future is so bright, I got to wear shades. So um, that's one of the things that, you know, you can believe. Also, another thing I noticed recently, I notice all the time, who believes, things that believe. Little dogs, little dogs believe that they are going to bite your legs off. I walk a lot and I see big dogs and I see little dogs. And the big dogs will just stand back. They don't ever get too excited. They'll just look at you while you're going by. They don't feel threatened. They don't. But little dogs, no matter how little the dog is, this dog will bark at you like 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 he's a great dane and that little dog will even bark at big dogs because that little dog believes that he's giant that little dog i could you could drop kick that little dog and i i don't i don't condone that kind of behavior but a little dog that's smaller than your foot will bark at you like godzilla like get away and don't even think about coming near my house you will be in big trouble and i'm going to cause that trouble and so little dogs believe, without a doubt, that they are the biggest thing in the world. And it's kind of funny. Next time you see a little dog, say, I got to believe in myself like that little chihuahua that just read me the right. Hey. All right. I, I lost the connection a little bit. I don't know if you're still there. But uh, okay. So so people are going to be saying, oh, Diana, yeah, you know, little kids, it's different when you're, when you're young and you have your whole life ahead of you and all of this and you can start stuff. But here's the thing. I'm going to read you the names of some people who were very famous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here you go. Miriam's saying that uh, her dog, who's a Rottweiler, and we love him to, to pieces, her. We love her to pieces, that uh, a little dog went up against her Rottweiler. And the Rottweiler's looking at the little dog like... Who are you kidding? I'm, I'm like a hundred times your size. But little dogs believe. Little dogs believe. You have to believe like a child and believe like a little dog. Believe like a little dog and bark like a little dog. Say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the top of my game. I'm going to be the best in my business. I'm going to open my own practice. I'm going to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. Rough, 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 rough. I'm going to go on Oprah Winfrey. I'm going to bark and say, listen, I'm like a little chihuahua that believed my life into existence. Uh, I think Buddha said that everything we are and everything we do is what we believed into existence. I'll, I'll get the actual quote next week for you. So success, success isn't just for young people. It comes at any age. So here are some people I looked up. Okay, Andrea Bocelli. I love him. Amazing singer. His first album came out when he was 34 years old, but it wasn't until he was 41 with his third album that he became super famous for that. Also, uh, Leonard Cohen, he wrote that song, Hallelujah. A lot of people know it. It's very famous. It's been in, I think it was in uh, Shrek, and it's been, you know, it's just a very notable song. Uh, he started singing when he was 31, which is late, but Hallelujah wasn't written until he was 50 years old. So this is somebody at 50 years old became famous for what he was doing. So you don't have to be a kid. Also, let's see, J.K. Rawlings and Martha Stewart both wrote their first books at age 41. J.K. Rawlings wrote Harry Potter when she was 41, and Martha Stewart wrote her first cookbook when she was 41. And of course, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Colonel Sanders, he uh, had his first opening of Kentucky Fried Chicken when he was 62 years old. And also, I know off the top of my head, uh, Henry Ford, Henry Ford, another late bloomer. I think he was in his 50s when he created the car. Now again, like stop signs are red, uh, and not yellow, I always imagined that Henry Ford was a young inventor at age 22 or something creating a car. But in fact, it wasn't until he was in his 50s that um, he invented the cars. So um, so uh, that is the lesson for today. It's to behave like a child, think like a child. Don't lose that childhood imagination. 
especially your imagination. Watch imagination stuff. Watch Shark Tank is great because people come up with ideas. I mean, look around your house. Imagine uh, creating something that's going to make your life better. Uh, sing in the shower. Uh, do whatever, you know, dance when you're alone or dance with people, whatever it is. You have to imagine, use your imagination, and you have to believe without doubting that you are going to become an amazing person. We all have greatness inside us, and it just, from being a child and growing into an adult, we're just exposed to so much negativity that you have to block it out and be very specific about the things that you allow into your mind. And don't think that you're too old because you're not. Many, many successful people started when they were very late in life. Um, so those are my uh, takeaways for the day. Believe like a child. Believe your life into existence. Use your imagination. And don't think that you're too old to start something new or something that you didn't imagine. I know um, <clears throat> a lot of my friends are, uh, are, are on stage. My brother Stephen, again, I'm going back to my brother Stephen. He's doing stand-up comedy. Um, who was that guy that I liked? He passed away. Black guy. I forgot his name. But he... Uh, he was very funny, and he became famous when he was uh, when he was 50 years old. So you can become you can become famous at any age, and you can reach your goals. So it's not too late. If you thought as a child, I want to be an artist, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a chef, and you're 50 years old now, it's not too late to get the help you need, go forward with it, and believe in yourself. Believe that you can do it. Believe in yourself like you're a little chihuahua and you're going up against a, <laughs> a, a, a Rottweiler, a pussycat Rottweiler who's not going to hurt you and is just going to say you're a crazy little dog and you don't know what you're doing. But you're going to be independent of that opinion and you're going to be like that little chihuahua and you're going to go after your goal like you're a, like you're a great dame and you're going to push for that. So uh, that is my message for the day. I'm going to point us out a little bit again to the outside. Let's see what else is going on. The parade is getting closer. It's late because because there was a, it's late because there was a, a lot of rain. So they started late instead of today. So yeah, there's a little child. I tell my friends, bring your kids to Mardi Gras. And they go, kids at Mardi Gras? What are you, crazy? But you can see all of these ladders are for children and I've been in Mardi Gras parades I've ridden in the parades and the children along the parade route their faces just sparkle they just light up when they see the parades coming and you throw beads to them or you throw uh oh here oh here's another group of people going to uh going to the ball now they're having fun these are people who are like children they're saying I don't care if we uh oh shoot I don't care if we have to tow our uh, our cooler to the parade, to the ball, and have fun. So, oh, anyway, anytime you want to come to Mardi Gras, let me know because it's a blast. I'm going to, whoa, I'm going to knock stuff over. I'll give you one last view of my beads that I've gotten so far. These are all the stuff that they throw. They, they were throwing, this was the special hat from Toth Derby, this this duck funny thing about this duck wow he looks sad <laughs> so the, i was here and i went to um oceana and i had duck it was smoked duck it was amazing and then it was really meaty and we asked the guy what kind of duck is this and he said it was like the aflac duck the white duck with the yellow beak the orange beak so someone that was eating in our group was so upset by that because when they were younger they fed those little white ducks and he, he loved the duck until he found out that it was one of those little white ducks that he used to feed as a kid, like it was a pet. So um, it's kind of funny that, you know, his, his whole impression would change about dinner based on, you know, that as a child he, he fed these ducks. It's kind of sad. And I feel bad about it, too, I got to admit, but it was, it was darn good duck. Okay, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I will be back next week. I'm going to be here for a week. I'm going to sleep it off. 
I'm having the greatest time. Mardi Gras is, Mardi Gras is for me, and I am a big child, so uh, that's that definitely helps. So thank you so much for tuning in. Does anybody have any questions or any any comments? You know, hang around with kids. Also, if you want to, I don't have any children of my own, but what I do is I'll hang around with kids uh, that make me, you know, and I'll ask them questions. I'll ask them about what they think or we'll try to build stuff together, you know, try and get them away. I saw somebody comment before about kids being on their iPhone and stuff. Okay, there's two things. Kids on their iPhone are, are, are using a different part of their brain. And um, hey, Charlie, love you too. And it's important for kids to go out and play and get physical exercise and use other parts of their brain. But the reality is the kids with the iPhones, you p they pick up a phone and they know what to do. What do you happens when, when you're my age and you have a computer problem, you, the first thing you say is, I need a 25-year-old to help me with this computer problem because they know how to run those because since they were kids, they've been looking at computers their whole lives. They wouldn't even know what to do with a rotary phone. So... Um, <clears throat> Those kids that are playing with that stuff, they are, they are the answer to a lot, of, a lot of problems that we're going to have in the future. Being able to compute and deal with uh, technology the way they do, second nature, I mean, ridiculous. They're going to be so over the top, and I think that's going to be a big help. But they're also going to have to you know, infuse a lot of arts and, and, and leisure and activity, exercise, sports, I love sports, not just watching, but playing, whatever I can. And uh, so that's going to be important for kids. Yes, Bernie Mac. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Bernie Mac, very funny guy. Got on stage when he was 50 years old. And um, yes, I'm going to be here next year. Come and join me. Anybody that wants to come and join me, come for Mardi Gras. But Bernie Mac, yeah, he started when he was 50. And then he had the Bernie Mac show. And they had something, you know, he had a... a a traumatic thing. I think he had a lung, lung embolism or something and he died. So guess what? He had his whole life. When he was 50 years old, he did what he wanted to do. He got on stage. He was a stand-up comic. He was hysterical. He was probably hysterical as a kid. He probably thought about it his whole life and he got sidetracked with whatever else he was doing. And then he became a comedian, had a great show, and then his life ended quickly and, and short, tragically. But, you know, we had him for the years that we had him and he was able to... Um, to, to reach his goal, reach what he wanted to do. I, I know I talk about Les Brown every week. This is something I heard Les Brown say. He went to a friend's funeral. A kid, somebody grew up with his kids. They thought they'd always be together their whole lives. And uh, the man died, and he was at the funeral. And one of the other ladies came over to him, and he said, you know, we buried a great man today. Uh, and I remember he used to talk about you and him collaborating on a recipe book because the guy was from... Uh, Jamaica and he, he cooked Jamaican food and Caribbean food and he was a really excellent chef and she said did you and he ever collaborate on that cookbook is that something that happened and he said no we never did collaborate on that cookbook and she said ah, he took that with him and Bernie and, and Les Brown was just blown away that he took that with him something that he wanted to do in his life that he didn't do and he didn't get to do and he passed on before he could do it. So the question is, what things are you, if you died today, what things would you be taking with you? What, what, what speeches that you have to make? What books that you have to write? What music that you have to play? What songs that you have to sing? What art that you have to create? What would you be taking with you if you, if you were gone today and you didn't have the chance to live out what your life dream was? That's a really good question. So don't wait. Don't wait. You're not too old. I know we have a couple of new people that just came in, Phil and Bob. Today was about being like a child. I'm going to do a little recap for you guys who have been here. Uh, so I'll do a little recap for the people just joining. Be like a child. Uh, children, um, play. Play more often. Use your imagination. Be easily amused by things in life. Um, don't talk yourself out of things that you want to do. Don't try and figure out all the obstacles. The obstacles will grow like weeds in your mind. Overnight, in an hour, you could grow an obstacle that will block you. So don't feed your obstacles. Don't worry about things. Uh, if you see a child worrying, it's because they hang out with an adult who's worrying. So be like a child and don't worry. And believe that you can do things. Believe your life into existence. 
Don't have any doubt that you can accomplish your goals. Believe it into existence and it will happen. Be like a little dog, a little dogs that believe that they're giant Great Danes and will come barking at your heels way sooner than that actual Great Dane will. So, oh, oh my gosh, I thought I put don't disturb on. This is very, dis all right, so. Believe like a little dog. Believe like a little dog. Ruff, 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 ruff. And bark. Bark with your goals. Bark your goals. And don't think that you're too old to do stuff. Uh, J.K. Rowling's and Martha Stewart both wrote their first books when they were 41. Andrea Bocelli became famous for singing when he was 41. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders first opened his first door when he was 62. So um, believe like a child. Play like a child. Love life. It's and, you know, just seek your goals out. Seek your goals out that you want to do it. And um, don't let your adult mind block you from that. Think about it like a child and then use your actions as an adult to get your goals. And don't watch the news before you go to bed. Don't watch the news at all, but don't watch the news before you go to bed because it's like watching a scary horror movie that embeds in your brain and then you have nightmares. Nobody thinks of the news as like a scary horror movie, but really the news is a scary horror movie 30 minutes before you go to bed. Some people like to watch TV. Watch Seinfeld. Seinfeld will make you laugh and you go to bed with that. But I don't watch TV, so I'll read a book or I'll do some meditating or I'll listen to a song, something, you know, melodic. Uh, I'll listen to some spiritual uh, verses. Sometimes I'll listen to uh, the tones, the binaural beats. That'll calm your brain down. And go to sleep with the uh, favorable plants in your brain. Plant roses in your brain before you go to sleep, not poison ivy. Because whatever, you are, <laughs> whatever you're planting in your brain overnight is going to ferment and you're going to wake up with the, the growth of that whatever it was so make sure it's good don't watch the news before you go to bed Kathy you're watching Dirty Dancing what a great movie nobody puts baby in the corner you got to face it dancing and watching dancing movies Kathy this is what I want you to do when they play all those songs and the dancing stuff I want you to get up and dance in front of the TV because you know what that's what a little kid would do a little kid would get up and dance in front of the TV. And if you have any kids in your house right now, if your whole family's there, your daughters and stuff, get everybody up and dance in front of the TV for the dirty dancing portions of the program because it's so much fun. It's so much fun to dance to dirty dancing, especially when they do that dance at the end where they're all, you know, rocking it. I, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Good. Everybody should dance more and sing more. Sing your favorite song. Sing whatever your My Sharona is. Put it on and, uh, and you know, let it play over. I like to listen to um, uh, the Guess Who. I just heard it the other day, too, and it's, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it, I'll, I'll tell you next week. It's about um, love, da, 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 da. I can't remember what it is right now, but I do like listening to the Guess Who, and I kind of dance to it behind the wheel while I'm driving. And you know what? It makes traffic go faster. When you're listening to music in your car, on the way to work, if you listen to four or five songs, the ride will go much quicker than listening to the news because the news is horrible and the music will calm you down and, um, you know, uh, oh, I know it is. Sooner or later, love is going to get you. Sooner or later, love is going to get you. Sooner or later, love is going to win. Yeah, that's that's me. That's my, um, <clears throat> my singing. So... The parade's going to come soon, so I'm going to end. We'll take one more look out the window to see if... Uh, I, I already saw the Cox, the Cox truck goes by to, to clear up, to make sure that there's no trees in the way. So here you go. This is more of what's going on. Little kids playing. There are some more little kids over there. They're all sitting up on their, uh, on their ladders. These ladders are getting ready for children. That's a whole stand there for children. And all these little kids, they're all taking a break because it was rainy in between the parade. There you go. Here's an adult who acts like a child. And uh, that's really what you want to be. That's why Mardi Gras is so great because it's for people who want to do this, dance in the street. And it's just fun. It's, it's, not, it's not cops in Mardi Gras. It's just fun stuff. Dancing in the street, playing until, playing until, uh, until the parade gets here.
And then it's nothing but catching beads and throwing. I, I, I'll, I'll shoot some Bacchus later. It's one of my favorites. So. so that's my lesson for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, next week we'll be on again, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I guess I'll be back in New York. And I don't know what the lesson will be, but it'll be something good. And... So thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, I can't wait to see you again next week, and have a great week, listen to music, dance, and you'll be happier, trust me, that's, that's the truth. Thank you so much. I love you all, and love is all you need. Bye. Bye again. <laughs> Brian Murray, you just got on, I'm sorry. <sighs> I will. Safe trip home. You too, Kathy. Brian, you're going to have to go back and listen to the replay because uh, it's worth it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great day.